Hello. In this video lecture, we are going to talk about projects for business renewal. And we are going to uh, open such concepts like uh, exploration, discovery, innovation and learning that uh, can be relevant uh, for business renewal. Well, uh, this picture uh, shows uh, the interplay between the firm and its projects. Uh, if we look uh, at uh, the left side of the uh, picture, so we can see that uh, there is exploration and the uh, red arrow uh, explains how uh, the connection can be uh, from a project uh, led learning to firm uh, by uh, taking the kind of a project to firm uh, renewal aspect. We can talk about vanguard projects, which are kind of a frontline projects uh, doing and developing something new and exploring for the firm. Uh, on the right side of the picture, uh, there is the term uh, exploitation, which means that uh, if the projects are to some extent uh, repetitive, uh, they can exploit uh, the knowledge uh, of the firm and uh, take advantage of uh, the already learned uh, uh, things and learned issues and uh, the capability base uh, within the firm. Um, learning is now the concept that we want to underline here and uh, quite uh, uh, interesting aspect also is uh, this uh, supplier customer interface uh, where we can uh, think about the supplier's uh, capability base. Uh, at the lower part of this picture, um, to the left, we can see that the supplier has a production capability and can efficiently deliver to the customer some core value. In the middle, uh, the supplier has the capability to do some inno innovation, at least incremental innovation, and uh, can deliver uh, innovation uh, to the uh, customer. But there, uh, the relationship with the customer and the capability of being uh, relationally con connected to the customer is rather important, and also relationally connected to the uh, subcontractor and sub-suppliers, probably, to uh, build a network where innovation can happen. And to the right of the picture, uh, the supplier has even a capability for radical innovation and even uh, capability of not developing its own business, but uh, even uh, deliver, uh, developing the customer's uh, business through radical uh, innovations. These same concepts as in the previous uh, picture are here. Uh, this is taken from the same source. And uh, this just emphasizes the importance of uh, relationship and the quality of the relationship in these different uh, uh, modes of uh, delivering value uh, to the customer. So um, to the left, there is low uh, relational complexity and uh, to the right, there is high relational complexity and uh, the supplier uh, can engage in a future oriented uh, uh, way of working with the customer and produce uh, some uh, uh, very innovative, even radical in, in innovation type of, uh, of uh, 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 new knowledge and systems to, uh, to, to the customer, and this requires really uh, rather complex uh, 
relationships and even a kind of a partnering type of uh, engagement of the uh, of both parties. Well, um, we emphasize learning uh, as important uh, thing, uh, but now in this picture uh, we want to bring up uh, the aspect of learning within a single project. So not uh, learning uh, between the company and the project or the supplier uh, or, and the customer or not necessarily even uh, learning from project to project, but learning within a single project. And when we are talking about uh, uh, business and developing business and being uh, uh, very capable of uh, uh, making worthwhile business uh, uh, in the kind of a fifth phase where uh, at the bottom of this uh, um, picture uh, there is the emerging advantage and uh, we are even talking about competitive advantage uh, marked with the red color there in the very last last line. And this is the kind of ultimate uh, business achievement to uh, create some competitive advantage over competitors or doing so unique project, so special project that the customer is really willing to pay us for uh, the big value that we can develop and so on. So, but when you read those steps, one, two, three, four and five, um, we can see how uh, the learning takes place. Learning uh, among the actors or learning among uh, the team. Uh, for example, in the very first uh, item, uh, there is the red color text, when the group understands key business drivers. So the group starts understanding. Then uh, that uh, leads to team effectiveness. Uh, uh, the group really starts uh, improving the understanding together and uh, really becoming uh, capable of increasing the competence. They learn really to be competent in that project together. Uh, and uh, then uh, in the fourth phase, uh, there is the ability to increase uh, uh, new differentiators, really uh, developing the understanding to that level so that you really can uh, uh, make uh, some differences in the product or services and uh, and uh, uh, in that way to reach the fifth phase which is the kind of emerging advantage so this uh, uh, this phases or these steps uh, try to explain how uh, the learning takes place um, as competitive uh, um, competitiveness development or capability development within a project, in a single project, which starts with different uh, actors, different players, which cannot necessarily together achieve the great outcome, but uh, through the learning uh, and through these steps, uh, they learn and de develop the capabilities and uh, eventually end up to this competitively advantaged uh, system or product. Well, uh, now I have uh, three uh, theoretically founded uh, pictures or slides uh, where I try also to um, bring to your understandings that individuals matter. This is the slide number one, individuals matter number one. And uh, this uh, is taken from uh, the radical innovation uh, research uh, where uh, really you try to create something uh, radically new. And uh, there are individuals that are called boundary spanners or X teams, which X teams means that uh, there are teams that uh, work in uh, different disciplines, they are multidisciplinary teams, they might also uh, uh, 
be involved in different functions of the company, both marketing and development and production. So they kind of uh, carry the understanding through these uh, functional areas and, 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 and so on. Uh, then uh, there are gatekeepers. There is a gatekeeping in interface uh, that either promote or uh, prevent or impede some information from flowing to certain other levels or departments or decision makers. Uh, some very important key uh, in, in the individuals. And uh, there is an arrow uh, going to corporate level decision makers and then uh, uh, reaching the project level and uh, reaching project level decision makers. But also uh, these individuals can all also only share their uh, information between each others uh, at the very low level of uh, technology specialists among just uh, uh, technologically advanced people only or marketing people only or low level uh, uh, people and, and then the information uh, remains to small groups of individuals and don't lead to actual action at the whole company level. So the important question is that, uh, that uh, how entrepreneurially oriented the ac activities are uh, in the company uh, what kind of uh, individuals there are that leverage the knowledge or restrict the knowledge from uh, 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 di uh, from being distributed and uh, what kind of uh, entrepreneurs or boundary spanners uh, or gatekeepers there are at the lower level of the organization that make things uh, being advanced or filter the information which might be beneficial that uh, not wrong information is uh, taken forward but of course there is also a risk that uh, very new innovative uh, things don't uh, uh, distribute in the organization either. Okay, individuals matter number one and radical innovation context. Now this slide uh, individuals matter number two uh, takes the viewpoint of uh, Edith Penrose, uh, whose uh, classic book, uh, The Theory of the Growth of the Firm, uh, published in 1959, uh, uh, was talking about um, uh, the firm growth th theory and uh, how, for example, new areas uh, are built in the firm and how the boundaries of the firm are changing as uh, new products or new services or new uh, business areas are uh, developed through projects, obviously. And uh, the uh, important concept, one important concept, uh, for example, in uh, uh, this uh, item number two is ambition and uh, uh, we are talking about uh, entrepreneurs within the company and uh, uh, the actual fact uh, in the item number two emphasizes that uh, extremely entrepreneurial ideas uh, may be impractical and little use of the firm uh, and uh, uh, firms uh, whose entrepreneurs, that is individuals, are kind of a dull, according to Penrose, uh, may make uh, the organizations uh, rather restricted in their projects of uh, developing uh, new uh, business contents. Uh, and uh, point number three uh, talks about entrepreneurs' uh, temperament. Uh, so, um, that comes to uh, the qualities of the person actually and uh, the motives. Uh, number four uh, talks about profit motive and how these uh, entrepreneurially uh, uh, important uh, 
managers who can uh, take the company to new areas are not necessarily motivated only by making more money, but also they are driving, uh, driven by uh, achieving power, prestige and uh, enjoyment of the game. And number five, uh, uh, many entrepreneur, entrepreneurs in the company, that is managers, uh, uh, can do the business for fun and uh, influence and prestige. And actually the profit is not the kind of a main thing, although it is very important for the survival of the firm and for uh, the a possibility to uh, develop things further. Okay, this was individuals matter number two message taken from uh, kind of a uh, theoretical foundations by Penrose. Then I take uh, one another uh, the theoretical uh, basis for uh, explaining individuals matter number three issue. And that is the uh, content uh, derived from uh, the rather uh, well-known uh, garbage can uh, model paper by Cohen, March and Olsen. And um, uh, they are talking about uh, a firm or an organization which is called uh, as organized anarchy, like a university organization can be that. And there are several problems, but we don't necessarily know uh, what uh, uh, solutions are good for these uh, problems. And there can also be several solutions, but we don't necessarily know uh, what problems the solutions are good for. And then there are decision makers that uh, more or less they come and go and search for job opportunities to make decisions and uh, organizational choices. Okay, um, well, um, if we uh, take uh, number, uh, the item number four, if we, uh, that uh, item talks about attention and uh, very much depends uh, how these individuals or decision makers atten attention is directed. Uh, is it, uh, are they directed towards certain decisions or uh, away from certain decisions? And uh, there are all the time different kinds of opportunities and uh, posi uh, potential positions for making choices. Uh, and it just depends whether uh, decisions and choices are made on all these things. Uh, then uh, the uh, item number six is rather kind of a uh, individual uh, oriented thing that also the kind of a lifestyle family frustrations and, and, and all these kinds of things uh, affect uh, the uh, decision makers behavior and uh, their attention. And uh, the Last item, number seven, kind of uh, summarizes that uh, the message here is that uh, the logic is not necessarily uh, the kind of a rational logic uh, in organizations, or at least in uh, not in uh, organized anarchies, uh, of first formulating the problem and then finding the solution for the problem. But it also can be that the solution is already there and just we must find the right question or problem for which this solution is a solution for. Okay, uh, some theoretical foundations for individuals matter. One, individuals, individuals matter. Two, and this third, individuals matter. Number three, so that uh, we are aware that uh, individuals also play a very important uh, role when we are talking about uh, the business of projects. Hey, thank you for being with me uh, in this video lecture. Let's continue uh, in the next lectures. See you there. Bye.